This video is brought to you by Squarespace. In this video, we're gonna show you how to turn this box set into this beautiful painted boy down there in a matter of a few hours, which you can do in one evening, a weekend, spread across the week, depending on how you do it. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to paint a Primark in just six hours. Now, when painting big models like this, you can't just go straight in and slap cut on it. You need a plan. And the plan is gonna be starting from the lowest points. This is how I always paint my models. Start from the lowest point or the lowest textures and build your way up. So in this video, we're gonna be concentrating on that red skin. Then we're gonna move up to the metallics and then pick out all the other details here and there. For undercoating Angron, what I've done here is I started with black and whilst it's wet, dusted over with Vampire Red. This gives it a nice dark to light red blend. It's perfect as well if you don't have an airbrush. And to see that done, just check out this video in the top right corner. Now for the skeletal work on the wings and tail, we shall begin with a dry brush of beige red. It's a nice fleshy red, a bit like Cadian Flesh Tone, and we're just gonna build it up with a couple of dry brushes. I'll also do this over the wing membrane in preparation for the black contrast later on. Then we shall dry brush over the light reds with deep red. So that's like his arms, his fists, his face. Followed by burn orange. And here I'm being far lighter and more selective. So just keeping it to those raised extremities like knuckles, cheeks, nose. That is the red skin for now, but we'll return to this later on in the extra step stage if you wish to add some extra highlights to help some of those extremities and face stand out. What is your bidding, my lord? Are we to crush the forces of the Imperium? Not this time, my little Ronnie. This time I have a far more important task for you. Please don't call me that. What can be more important than slaying our enemies and piling their skills high upon your altar? Yes, yes, little Ronnie, that's great and all, but have you heard of Squarespace? What is Squarespace? Is it some form of Eldari magic? I hate magic. No! <laughs> Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. Think, you could always promote your sewing like you've always wanted. Squarespace easily allows you to connect your social media accounts to your website displaying posts from your social media profiles, as well as automatically pushing website content to your favorite social media channels, so your rage-filled followers can share it too. Imagine the carnage, Ronnie. It's Angron. Well, with Squarespace's professional portfolio designs, you can easily present your work for all to see, display projects in customizable galleries, and add password-protected pages to share private work with your clients. We wouldn't want Zinch or Slanesh knowing our plans, would we? Also, Squarespace makes it easy for artists and creators or thriving warlords like yourself to monetize their content and expertise in a way that fits their brand. With member areas, don't worry, that's not a Slanesh thing, you can unlock a new revenue stream. I prefer it in blood or skulls, but it's up to you, little Ronnie. It's Angron. Freeing up time in your schedule for more slaying and conquering by selling access to gated content like video, online courses, newsletters, hollow readouts, telepathy, you name it. Seriously though, little Ronnie, there's so much customization and choice. I'm vexed we didn't do this earlier. Head to squarespace.com forward slash the painting phase to save 10% of your first purchase of a website or domain using the code the painting phase. For the brass details, I'm not gonna go super mad and neatly pick out all the armor panels. Instead, I'm going for a rough and ready look and I'll be overbrushing this across all those brass sections. It's worth pointing out, I'm not at all concerned about any red in the recesses for two reasons. One, the wash will hide most of that later on. And also, if you don't hit it with any wash and you miss it, it will just look like dry blood. So don't worry about it. And also, painting brasses or golds over red actually looks really nice and you don't have to sit there ages with like a grey undercoat. So first up, I'm going to heavily overbrush with AK Bronze. Again, I will try and avoid the red skin if I can, but if I do get any on there, just tidy back up with those previous dry brushes or some of that colour, it'll be fine. Next up for the silver details, I'll be using AK Oily Steel, though any of a gunmetal silver tones will do the job.
Now I'm gonna get some Targor Raid Shade here and apply that all over the brass and the silver. As always, be mindful for any pooling, but just take your time. I'm not worried about this getting on the skin, so if it does get on the skin, don't worry. You'll just like add a nice little bit of border to the model, but really try and keep it to the metallics if you can. And soak up any excess. I will repeat that. Soak up any excess, there will be a bit. Just, just be mindful. With that wash thoroughly dry and any pooling avoided, it's time to lightly dry brush with oily steel over all those metallics. I'm doing it over both the silvers and the brasses and it's just a nice simple way of getting a quick highlight. And honestly, it looks really cool and that'll be the brass and the silver done for this model. We're not going back to it. So just take your time on that dry brushing. For any skulls, bones, and also those fleshy pipes, we're gonna be using some Rakar Flesh. Again, a simple overbrush or dry brush will be employed here. Apply it a bit lighter for those fleshy pipe things. Also, quickly pick out those snarly teeth with Rakar too. Again, just use a nice fine brush for this. And then for those skulls, I'm just gonna get some Targo Raid Shade, thin it down 50-50 with water, and just drop that into the recesses. And here, you can also use your finger to wipe for an instant highlight, if you're cheeky like me. For all our black sections, I'm gonna apply the services of Abaddon and make full use of his Black Legion contrast paint. Other than the wings, everywhere else is gonna be straight from the pot. Now for the wings, what I'm gonna do here is get some Black Legion and thin it down 50-50 with contrast medium. I'm just gonna apply that over. And the great thing here is some of that highlighting and dry brushing is gonna punch through there as well. So it's gonna make it look like a bit of a dark red membrane. Again, later on, when we get to the extra steps, we will touch on that and do some dry brushing. But you know what? You can just leave it at this and it'll look great. I'm also gonna apply some of this over the blade as well, some of that thinned down Black Legion. Again, some of that red will punch through when it dries. It's gonna have a similar effect to the wing membrane, but we'll do some different highlights later on in the extra steps for that. Also, don't forget to pick out the trim on the hooves too, once you've coated them in black, because I nearly did forget. Now for the base, I'm gonna heavily overbrush the rocks and schools with deep sea gray. Then I'll lightly dry brush the rock and also heavily dry brush the schools with Rakar Flesh. Now there's two Space Marine helmets on this base. Uh, I strongly recommend picking them out of color that's gonna really, really annoy your opponents or your mates. Here, I'm gonna channel my inner hatred for those Ultramarines, sorry Marius, but they're gonna get the treatment that they deserve, which is dead. Now, before we move on to doing any shading, I'm just gonna pick out those gold spikes with a little bit of AK brass. And then I'm just gonna coat over the skulls, the helmets and the brass, and also some bits in the deeper recesses of those rocks with Targor Raid shade again. Now for the texture on the base, I'm gonna be applying some dry ground. I like to apply it thinly as I get closer to those edges where the paintwork is so I don't splodge, but around the rest of the model, just apply it quite thickly, move it around, try and fill some of those gaps if there are any. Then I'm gonna apply some of this super thin as it's an extra bit of weathering and I can just run that as like a nice bridge between some of those skulls on the base so it looks like lots of sand has just drifted in between those skulls. And of course, if there are any areas that need a little bit more love or a little bit more texture, just get some more on like I'm doing here and just applying it round. Because as it dries, you will see like a bit of darkness of the base showing through. So just apply some more. Now, Angron has some verdigris on his Wild Eater badge. To tie this in with our actual Wild Eaters collection we painted in a previous video, I'm just gonna be using Striking Scorpion Green here and just applying it to all those details that have the Wild Eaters marking on them. I've slightly thinned it down, just a bit of water, and just it'll just look lovely. And again, like I said, tie it nicely with that collection that's already been painted. Then it's time to sponge on some Blood for the Blood God onto his big chain axe. And you might just wanna get some thick stuff neat from the pot in case you don't quite fully cover the, uh, the teeth of the chain axe itself. And no surprise, he's probably killed some Ultramarines with that because it looks like Ultramarine blood. True facts. So to get our Angron tabletop ready, it took us about four and a half to five hours to get all those base coats on those washes done. Again, he's a bit loosey-goosey, a little bit rough and ready here and there, but you know what, for the tabletop, perfect. You can be playing games straight away. Now for the extra steps, this is optional. You don't have to do it, but it will add a little bit more love to details like his face, the leather, the wings. So we're just gonna crack on with that now. And I think that's gonna, well, that's gonna be an extra hour's worth of work. So that could be an evening. Just sit down, watch Downton Abbey, in the background while I was painting up Angron. Perfect segue. <laughs> <laughs> that made no <laughs> Downton Abbey and Angron, of course. Yep, we're doing it. <laughs> 
So the first thing for our extra steps is to dry brush deep red on the edges of the blade. And then to add some extra punch to that very punchable face, for this we'll be using a highlight or a chunky highlight of deep red. I'm also going to apply that to some knuckles and his biceps as well. Then following that, we're going to get some burn orange. Again, I'm going to use this as a fine highlight across the face, the knuckles, as well as the edge of his blade. And then I'm going to super thin that down and just run it into that skull crack magma effect down the fuller of his blade. I'm not quite sure what it's supposed to be, but it looks evil and demony. For the black leather details, as well as the hooves and also the claws, I'm going to be using some deep sea grey here. First of all, just to apply some scratches to that leather, a couple of edge highlights. So the hooves, it's more just like doing some vertical little streaks. Again, just emphasising the hoof effect. And then of course on the claws, I'm just going to run the edge of my brush along those. Then for the fur, I'm just going to lightly dry brush this again with deep sea grey. Just take your time, build it up, and then also apply that to the wing membrane for an extra highlight. You don't have to do this part, I just wanted to do that to give it a bit more of a grey tone, so it goes from like a red to a grey at the very extremities of the wings. For the skulls, what I'm going to do here is get a little warm grey and just highlight those up. In some places you can use a dry brush, in others like the teeth, you might just want to use a fine brush. So there we are, our Primark Angron himself has been done in a matter of hours, so six hours across a couple of evenings. That That's like your, your main character for your army done. Again, don't forget to check out our Wild Eaters collection as well, how we painted that. And again, that's a week's worth of work to do a small Wild Eaters army. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you took a few useful tips and tricks on how to get a decent character painted up in like a matter of evenings. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe. Remember, we have a Patreon, so check that out. Until our next meeting, auf Wiedersehen. And it could be my little. Oh, I just need an angel now. I need to get like Celestine or something like on the other shoulder and they can talk to me. Be like, drink all the tea, Peachy. No, save some for Pat. Drink it all and eat all the biscuits. Yes, Angron, you're right. I will do that. No, no, shut up, Pat. <laughs> 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 <laughs>